Hello everybody, I'd like to welcome you back to my YouTube channel. I've been away for a good while, but I'm not dead, just to let you know I'm back. In this series, we're going to explore the Assembly Language Project for 2020, so I'm excited to get this started for you. Um, if you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe, and let's get this show on the road. Okay, everybody, to get the project on the go here, I want to introduce this to you and I'm actually presenting this in PowerPoint. So as I mentioned it's the C64 Assembly Language Project of 2020. The ultimate game design stream on YouTube. Getting ready to launch a whole new series on game design for the Commodore 64. Looking for willing candidates for programming, graphics, and music sound experience. Creative people are encouraged to apply. So yes, I'm recruiting people and I'm looking for people who do have experience. Um, if you're beginners, you're welcome to watch, but really we need people to keep up with the pace. So what I wrote down here are some good steps to what I believe are uh, good steps to game design. Um, so having a good ideal story Fun gameplay, memory reservation, which is banking memory, good graphics, sprites, multicolor backgrounds, fine scrolling, raster interrupts in the timing, sprite animations, music, lots of options, weapon, pickup, so forth, challenging bad guys, bosses. So reviewing to have a good ideal. Um, so putting together a game is hard work. It's like writing a best-selling novel that people will enjoy reading. I've learned over the years to put a story into place before trying to move forward with designing a game such as for the Commodore 64. Memory reservation. A good explanation of memory reservation is putting aside memory to make room for graphics, music, and lots of code such as an assembly language. According to Map in the Commodore 64, the video chip, VIC, can access 16K of memory at a time and all graphics data must be stored in that 16K block in order to be displayed. Within this area, sprite graphics data may be placed in any of 256 groups of 64 bytes each. Character data may be stored in any of the 8 2K blocks. Text screen memory may be in any of 16K sections with bitmap screen memory in either of the 8 28K sections. So when you turn the power on, the VIC uses the bottom 16K of memory for graphics. This block of memory is also used for other important purposes. In many situations, you will want to change from the default 16K bank at the low end of memory. The memory registers we're going to go over here soon. Keep in mind that your game program consumes memory quickly, so moving the banks around is key to allowing a large game project to be designed appropriately in memory. So here's the C64 memory banks as again from the book. Um, bits 0 and 1 select a current 16K bank for video memory for four possible choices using the following bit patterns. And you can identify them with the binary codes here and you can see the decimal and the hex next to them. So I don't want to read a lot of this, but this is baked to zero if you want to learn a little bit more about it. Um, you can definitely check out my website, c64brain.com. Um, essentially here, it's just a way of um, utilizing memory in specific locations and being able to access more of memory as a result. And that's pretty much all the banks will do. And depending on where you put the bank and where you set the bit is where how much memory you're going to have access to and where the graphics and, you know, the data fall into. So you can see here this is bank one is talking about being able to switch ROM out and copy it to RAM. Bank two which is consists of half 8k of RAM it can be seen by the VIC2 chip as character ROM and 8k basic interpreter ROM. 
and it's um, got basic available for graphics and you can see the VIC chip only reads from RAM it sees the RAM underneath the basic ROM the 6510 writes to RAM even when dealing with memory as it reads ROM and again kind of going forward this opens up 8k of sprites of memory for sprites and character data under the basic ROM when utilizing Bank 2. Bank 3 contains 4k of RAM unused by the system 4K I.O. registers, AK operating system kernel ROM, another good place for graphics and if you're doing basic. And a character ROM is not available that can be copied to RAM. Okay, so getting back to what we're talking about, good graphics gameplay. So having a game with good graphics will entertain any player at first. But keeping a person interested will involve a lot of repeated playing and less frustration such as bad joystick movement, possible enemies and so forth. So I intend to make it my mission to ensure a good game not only has nice looking graphics but keeps a player engaged with the interesting gameplay. And I've got some examples here um, that I'm going to show you if I have time to put in this video. And you can see I've got Batman here demonstrating. Did Batman the movie, by the way. Here's Turrican 2. Robocop 3. Heijin. And that's what... There's many other titles, but those are just some I'm just reviewing. So another thing with... Um, good game design approach is fine scrolling moving the screen so fine scrolling involves shifting the screen when moving a player past border boundaries when going either left right up or down although there are games that contain single screen gameplay I am convinced that scrolling the screen beyond the borders makes for a more interesting experience this is why I spent a long time studying this and learning about proper timing the screen is consists of pixels that can move in any direction the tiny dots are known as bits according to C64, and manipulating these bits is the key to advancing your understanding of fine screen scrolling. Raster interrupts. So a raster interrupt occurs when a process is stopped to allow a certain interaction, such as a disk drive reading information, keyboard accepting input, a screen being updated, and so much more. In our game series, the program utilizes tracing a raster line down the screen to provoke an interrupt during the time that the screen display is scanning lines down the screen from left to right. And the American screen's NTSC has got its own, you know, graphics. I think it was 260 lines. Um, and the, th the European is 312 lines. Each one is updated every 60 times per second. Two of these are available for the visible display scene. Raster scan lines. It's helpful to know which line is being scanned because changing screen graphics on a certain line while the, that line is being scanned may cause a slight disruption on the sc screen. By reading register 53266 or D012 on the simulator's program can wait until the scan is off the bottom of the screen before changing a graphics display. So our game program uses this to copy graphics data to a back buffer, scroll the screen, and much more. And here's um, a program you can take a look at that utilizes a scan line check. Now, sprite animations is another great thing. So no Commodore 64 game is complete without some type of sprite animations. Our game will have a lot of these once it's reached the final stages. Sprite animations are managed by the VIC register and are placed on the screen as a shape pointed from a memory register. We'll explore these more later. Many of the popular games back in the days and more recent have plenty of sprite animations to keep a user engaged all throughout the gaming experience. And here's a few I have enjoyed. It is a popular belief that beyond the multicolor graphics of the Commodore line of computers, music, which is produced by the SID chip, has completely revolutionized games written for this machine. I want to make it a goal to include great music in our game. Some popular games include pretty amazing soundtracks. Here's a few honorable mentions. And if I have time, I'll try to insert a video clip here. Um, we'll be looking into using Goat Tracker for our music editing and stuff. 
lots of options. Before the game is finished, I intend to have a lot of cool options added, such as a selective choice of weapons, various objects to pick up, and so on. Keeping a game filled with options makes for a more memorable playing experience, and I look forward to seeing how interesting we can make this for our audience. Here's a list of some old school options that were embedded into some popular games during that era. And no game is complete without having some type of challenge and boss to take on. Nintendo made this famous and stopped players from proceeding to the next level until they eliminated a confrontational bad guy, blocking the gate beyond. So our game likely will include several bosses to make it more enjoyable. Several games seen here show how adding a boss makes the game more challenging and addictive to play. So in conclusion, I hope you enjoyed this series on seeing what is upcoming for the C64 Assembly Language Project of 2020. I'm glad to know that I can finally get a nice game underway for viewers to enjoy and I look forward to comments for this video session. Please feel free to contact me if you have some experience with programming in Assembly Language for the Commodore 64 computer and I'll see if I can find a spot for you among the team. Thank you for always watching and subscribing and liking this video and many more to come. Okay guys, I wanted to demonstrate the game in progress as it is. Um, you see this little character guy running around on the screen here. And yes, I did extract him from another game. He's on a rooftop, he falls off here. So, it has up and down movement on the ladders and falling off like just like before. And he has this weird jumping ability he can do. He goes up and down the ladders. He can't jump out of the range of where he is. And there is some weird movement going on with the left or the right movement. But for now, it is what it is. Just trying to demonstrate that, you know, this is what I got so far. And I'll be designing more screens. Um, I did utilize some of the graphics from Metal Warrior, but there is a lot of this that was done myself with like the windows and, and all that kind of stuff. And also the little ladders here going up or the, I guess you would call those the little pipes or whatever that they fit on the, the buildings. The spouting and all that. Okay. Earlier there was an error when I tried to go up this ladder so I don't know if it's going to do it again. Yeah, it did. It crashed. So. I'm going to leave it at that for now. Um, it still needs more work, but I wanted to show you the game in progress. So the next thing I wanted to go over before we conclude this video is the website, c64brain.com. I've actually created this article and placed it on the website here. So if you go to the website and you scroll down, over here in the corner, you'll see the C64 Semi Language um, project right here. Just click on it. It'll load the page here. And you'll see this is the PowerPoint I was working out of earlier. So just to kind of um, show you, if you want to see the whole thing and read it, you can read it right here on the website. You don't have to stop and watch the video over and over again. And this is the story behind the game. Um, so you're like a parkour character. Um, you're out there, you know, having fun with your friends one day and they suddenly disappear. You get a, a, an anonymous call from a gang member that is requesting payment to get them free. And your goal is going after them while avoiding, you know, stray dogs, bats, security guards, and police officers. And also, at the end of this, um, you'll see I have created a form here. So for those who want to join the project, go ahead and fill out the form. You can fill out your name here, um, I, your experience with the C64 assembly language, whether it's up from one to two years, up to five plus more years, your skills with the Commodore 64, so whether it's graphics, whether it's music, you know, rasters, demonstration, you know, physics, whatever it is you want, put that down there. And really important, the hours of availability, morning, evening, overnight. Um, this is very important now because I'll be doing my streaming on Friday nights. 
um, as my Saturdays are actually taken now with a new girlfriend in my life. And the other thing here is um, that your email so I can contact you back and any other feedback you, that was not here that you'd like to let me know, go ahead and leave it. And probably the other thing I wanted to mention here was that um, the project itself, I mean, will be streamed on YouTube, but we're going to be needing some kind of special tool. And I did talk with um, another um, one of our um, team members here and came across some different tools because they've done away with uh, Google Hangouts now. So as a result of that, we can actually utilize a uh, different uh, screen sharing uh, device that was actually mentioned to me here in an actual email. Um, just to protect the person's information, I'm not going to actually show the email, but Darren mentioned here in, in the actual email here, if I can actually locate it here, uh, to use an application called Discord. And actually real quickly here to show you, right here is Discord. So we could go ahead and utilize this tool in our, our, our screen sharing environment. And also for communication, I'll probably still be using stuff like, you know, Skype and whatnot to communicate and everything. So I'd like to hear you guys' feedback. Um, I hope this video was enjoyable to you. Okay, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this video for the Assembly Language Project of 2020. Um, I'll be looking forward to communicating with you guys real soon. Um, just feel free to go ahead and leave uh, either the website or in the comments below. Also, I forgot to mention if you want to, um, I'm, I'm going to actually have the project step by step, but it's going to be on the membership site. That's what I'm going to try to do. And for those who are signing up for the project, there wouldn't be no entry costs for that. So I hope you guys um, yeah, enjoyed this session. I'm looking forward to getting this on the road again and see how it goes. It's been a good while, but we're going to make this work. So thanks so much, guys, for everything. And look, um, look forward to very soon for my own Commodore 64 brand. I'm wearing a Swatches t-shirt, and I want to get it out. And it's going to take me some time. i got to design this in Photoshop and everything. But if you guys actually got some people want to even help out, maybe even give me some tips on how to design a really cool t-shirt that could really, you know, emulate the brand. I'd appreciate it so much. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, like always, please favorite, subscribe, everything, share the video. And we're going to make and we're going to rock this town. So have a good day.